relations, marketing, and social media and healthcare requires making the right moves at the right time. Welcome to the Overrated and Underused Show. Here's your host, experienced marketers Jen Jennings and Tom Testa, with special guest Adrian Stoner. Overrated and underused, the Overrated and Underused Show. Welcome everyone to Overrated and Underused. We are your hosts. I'm Tom, along with Jen. Jen, how's things? Things are wonderful. Wonderful. Well, it's October. Are they spectacular? Spooky season. Yes, it is fall. I mean, it's starting to get a brisk, you know, 60, 70 degrees down here in uh, in Georgia. Right. And it's pretty much winter up here in uh, New England at this point. So, you know, that's, that's that's how it goes. But Shoveling the snow already. Exactly. Oh my gosh. I know it's, I can't believe it's already fall. We, we're already looking forward to, to summer, but Jen, today it's going to be a, I don't know, maybe a different kind of episode. I think it's something that's timely. We're going to get into for our for our listeners, a little bit of a, a discussion that maybe many of our listeners or those within their organization are having. Yes. So, I mean, what goes hand in hand with carving pumpkins? Apple crisp. <laughs> and strategic planning. And strategic planning. That's right. Strategic planning. Uh, but seriously, it's like, it's that time of year. I mean, we're heading towards, by most uh, calendars, it's we're heading towards Q4 for a lot of folks. And, and yeah, and that means planning for for the year ahead, planning and budgeting for their social media PR and marketing efforts. Yes. 2023 planning. It's crazy that we're, we're here, but it feels like it's a busy time of the year, especially with, you know, fall trade shows and things like that. Yep. But as we roll into planning for the next year, it's, I love this time of year where we're looking at everything that's kind of been accomplished in the last year, where we want to go, where we want to focus our efforts and really making some decisions forward. So, yeah, I think it is an exciting time because we're doing it. We actually have, are doing it for several clients, right? So when you, when you come from an agency approach, it's like, you must really be all psyched out because now, you know, you're all jazzed about planning already, Jen. And now we're doing it for like oh, everybody, versus, everybody. <laughs> this is our episode. We're talking about planning versus reporting. What is overrated and what is underused? I think let's start with planning since that is what comes first. Yeah. You got to plan before you can report. Overrated, underused, Tom. Planning. It's hard to say it's overrated. You know, I know I know there's something that might say, oh, it's overrated. You know, everyone plans and then you you plan too much. Or, But I think it's almost impossible to say planning is overrated. So I'm saying it's underused. Underused. Only because I think you can't say it's overrated. Okay. I know, um, does that make sense? Well, yeah, it makes sense because that's your opinion. So who would say that? It's got to be underused because you, you, you've got to plan. It's 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 critical. Yes. So I am definitely in the mindset that planning is absolutely necessary. I'm very type A. I love a plan. I love mm-hmm. advance notice for everything. I love to know what is happening when and how and by whom. So I enjoy planning. I enjoy seeing plans. But there is a line where you could spend more time planning than doing the actual work of the plans Mm -hmm. themselves. So I think it is a balance. But as far as this season and strategic planning, I think is absolutely necessary and, you know, great for any organization. You know, we do it as an agency. We do it for all of our clients, you know, help them with their PR, marketing, social media, strategic plans, take a look at your past initiatives, what seemed to really work or, you know, new ideas you have that you can start working on, you know, in the future. So I think all of that is great for every organization to to do that annually. But when you start talking about planning or putting together very detailed and intricate plans for small campaigns. It's it's a seamless process. Like you've done it 50 times, but let's put together a plan just to outline these steps. Like I, I think if 
there is a balance in how much time you're spending planning yeah, versus yeah, doing yeah. the actual work. Right. And you're right. You can get really into the plan for this and plan for that. On today's episode, we're going to be focused more on an overall strategic plan for the year ahead. And again, this episode isn't about, we're not going to dig into like, here are tips for a killer plan because it's different for everybody in every organization. We know that we're talking very high level, 30,000 foot on the take on planning, right? Is, is that fair to say? Yeah. You know, I think we're both agreeing that planning is not overrated. Right. It's a balance. And if it's underused though, I, I do think a lot of organizations plan or have some level of strategic planning, but there are some that are don't have the time for that or are too in the weeds or don't, aren't setting aside the time for their strategic planning. So yep. I do yep. think if there's, if I had to choose one, it would be the underused aspect. Because we don't always do it in like the day to day or when you're right. in the middle of the projects and campaigns. But then annually, when you get to strategic planning and start looking at, okay, well, what have we accomplished this year? Right. What really worked? Or, you know, what was different this year than the last year? Mm -hmm. And what can we bring into this? So I think it's, you know, taking the time to really look at the whole view of everything that you're doing is always going to be a worthwhile effort for any organization. Mm -hmm. Yep. No, I agree. And, and some of that, in order to figure that out too, for benchmarks for the year and things like that, that's where some, I guess, of the reporting will come into play. And we can talk about that because you're looking at some of the, the numbers, the successes that you had the year before, as you plan for the year ahead to see what needs to be tweaked and what, what doesn't. But I also think as we talk about planning, there's also maybe a little bit of the accountability factor within it too, because again, it's like you could build this amazing plan. And you just said, you're not going to be in the plan every day. And so I, when I say accountability, I mean, there's got to be someone who's making sure that that plan is on point and being executed in a timely fashion and potentially tweaked if needed too. Always tweaked. Things are so evolving. A lot of plans um, that I work on, you know, it's, you're just looking at the information that you have that day, mm -hmm. what you know. And so there's always, okay, well, this might happen, or we might have this ready early. Like maybe we'll launch this earlier. You know, you should be open to flexibility yep. in your plan. So what I would say too, is, you know, you say about you're working in the now, and what you know and what you can work with because, you know, right now, but then there's also, you know, don't you love it when you, you feel you've got this amazing plan, right? Oh, I've got this plan. It seems really airtight and buttoned up and wow, this is going to be a successful plan. Then there's always the, you know, unfortunately you're not the end all be all right. Then it's either the, the CEO weighs in or the client weighs in. You're like, cause of course that, that, that feedback is, it's important, but there's also that, that can actually change um, a lot of the direction and the points within your plan. Yeah. Or, I mean, it's something's not ready in time. And so, yeah. you know, launch plans change or, you know, the content pieces are like, there's so many variables that have to be aligned for a plan to come off, you know, exactly as it right. was done. But exactly. I think that the whole purpose of this isn't that okay, well, this happens on this day and this happens. It, it's that, you know, you reach the end goal that you, you know, are accomplishing the stuff that your organization finds the value in and that you're working towards something. So it's not necessarily every individual line item that happens on each specific day. Um, I mean, in some cases it is, but like, I think when you're talking about strategic plans, you're really just looking at accomplishing your overall goals and objectives and finding the best ways to do that. And so, hey, if you're putting out three white papers in the next year and mm -hmm. you plan for one to go out in February and June and September, and your first one's not ready until March or April, it's still going to be okay. Yep. <laughs> like it's, yep. you know, looking at it from that mindset, planning for the future keeping your goals in mind and having the flexibility to understand the, the realistic variables right. that come into play in every organization and every plan, I think is the, the best approach. This is where I'd love to have, you know, some listener feedback or input as, you know, I wonder, you know, which, which individuals, they, they more plan individual campaigns versus 
campaigns within a giant plan. So here's a big plan made up, made up of all these campaigns. So I wonder which one, and I don't see it in, as a negative thing, but I wonder which folks don't have that overarching, here's the plan for the year, but say, okay, all right, here's something that's that's happening. We're, and so now we like to roll with the punches and develop plans around individual campaigns throughout the year, like a new product launch, or you know even something around breaking news. Like if something impacts the industry and we want to do a campaign around that, you know? So, but I wonder how many folks take that approach. Yes, I'd love a poll. It, it kind of depends. Like I am in the mindset where I love the larger look at this is what we're doing across everything. Yep. Um, but to do that, you you also have to, you know, if there is a new initiative, a new product launch, a new partnership that you're wanting to, you know, jointly promote and you put together a plan you know, for the execution of that with, you know, both organizations, you know, something like that, but then that gets rolled into the larger full scope of everything type plan. But there are probably, you know, organizations out there that don't have the the larger full thing. Yeah. They just plan for, okay, well, you know, we've got this coming up and we, we'd like to, like, what should we do to, to promote this? Like, what are our, our steps? And then they want to figure it out. So I don't think every project, every campaign, every initiative needs a plan. If it's something very routine, it's if it's an announcement and it's like, if the person doing the work knows what they need to be doing and the steps that need to happen, you, do, you don't necessarily need a, a plan. If someone has a big announcement that they're launching to the press, we don't need a plan for that. Like, right. you, you know, okay, well, we're going to write this pitch, you know, we're going to figure out our top five targets. Like we know the steps that are happening, but it's when, you know, you have more people involved that you might need a plan or if it's something new or if you're bringing in new aspects or if there's very specific deadlines. I think those would be the cases where you might need a campaign or project specific plan. What do you feel about, you know, getting the input? I think it's underused in that. I wonder how many people kind of you know, not that they don't take the input, but, you know, people try and just pull a plan together without really consulting with every member that's going to touch this plan. Yes. I think at some point, everybody that is touching a plan in some way should right. see the plan and weigh in on it before it is finalized. Right. Just because if there is a concern that like, oh, okay, well, this, this time frame's off, like they could raise any concerns or questions at that time. But it's just a balance of, you know, you can have too many cooks in the kitchen. But yeah, I think everybody that is involved should be included in the planning. All right. Well, if you are just tuning in, you're listening to Overrated and Underused on Healthcare Now Radio. Today's episode is on planning versus reporting. Okay, so we've talked lots and lots about how Plans make the world go round. Yeah, absolutely. What about reporting? <laughs> uh, r- accountability, ROI. It, I mean, you know, I think anyone who's in the PR marketing field who's listening to this knows like it's a tough subject in terms of how to perfect reporting or, you know, what makes a good analytic, some good data to share with, which it's critical. It is because it shows progress or not. It shows accountability for that plan you just pulled together. Like, Hey, look, uh, you know, this was on point. Now we have some, you know, metrics to go against the various points of the plan, but I'm guessing it's probably underused for more people than not. Underused. You know, I, I do. I think that maybe people who haven't perfected what a great report might look like or what the various parts of a good reporting structure or how you report to clients or your boss. I wonder if, if it's more underused because people just aren't doing it because they just aren't sure how to what makes a good report yeah i think reporting is overrated i knew it overrated for the most part i i mean i think there's always got to be some level of accountability yeah you know and it's always good to to look at the successes or the failures you know of any kind of initiative But I think that in most cases, you know, when something was a success, you know, when, you know, there was all kinds of, you know, hits to this, you know, your website, when you got all these sales leads, like somebody in the organization is seeing the traction. So, Mm -hmm. and I guess where the, the desire for more reporting comes from is to 
prove yourself and prove yourself as an agency, prove the work that you're doing mm-hmm. as a marketer to your CEO, to, you know, whomever at the company or your client. Reporting is just one of those things where it's kind of a necessary evil, but at the same time, I think there is some inefficiencies and, in, you know, how it can be done. And there mm-hmm. could be too often, you know, okay, well, you know, we, we sent out this press release. How many hits does it have? Like a, a daily update of all of that. Like that's probably unnecessary in most cases. So it's just, it's like finding that balance of how you want your internal marketing teams, how you want your outside agency marketing teams spending their time. Do you want them spending a lot of time proving the work that they're doing through reporting of metrics that really could be skewed in a lot of ways. Um, It kind of just depends what you're asking for. Some of the work that is being done is kind of a, it's a long game and, you know, building campaigns. So there's not always instant results, but it's the same thing. It's, It's a balance, but I think often in a lot of organizations, there is the desire for too much reporting. Mm -hmm. What I find just tough is that, you know, if you look at the different things you need to report on, you know, PR, for example, like you said, uh, people want to see results as they happen. So most likely we don't even know know that we're reporting, but we're essentially reporting in some ways on a daily basis where other things need to marinate a little more. Like if you were to start an SEO program, I know you're more of an expert on this than I am, um, or any kind of website stuff, most likely it needs to, like, it needs to marry a little bit. You're not going to report, you just start a campaign and what, what are our clicks tomorrow? You know, I know at our agency, we look at social media. Sure, we take a look at things in real time if we're getting, you know, in certain engagement and things like that. But we often report that on a quarterly basis. The challenge is bringing it all together for some either biannual or annual kind of overall report to kind of showcase all these things that we're reporting on an ongoing basis, so to speak, throughout the year. I don't know if that sounds... Yeah, no, that makes sense. And I and I think that's, you know, you're absolutely right in that we're communicating the success or com- communicating, like sharing coverage as it's happening, right. sharing article placements. There are, you know, at least for for you know, our experience in, you know, sharing email metrics and and things like that. But I guess I'm just, I'm thinking in terms of, I I know there are organizations where, you know, there's the CEO wants weekly, you know, graphs and charts and like full reports of, you know, everything. And so there's, there's a line to draw in like how much time you're, you're spending in making pretty charts or just really sharing the top happenings and, and those kind of things. So I guess when I'm, I'm saying like reporting is overrated, I think of bigger, more intricate, like full comprehensive kind of, this is our year in review, but hey, yeah. this is our week in review. A lot of times right. when you're balancing a budget, yeah, balancing, you know, shortage of marketing resources and staff, you know, I think the planning and the reporting, you want that to be such a a minimal part of what they're doing. You want them to do more of the work, you know, spend their time doing the actual work, gaining the results and getting you out there in front of, you know, the industry. Now I hear what you're saying. Less, less time, you know, let's, let's in in agency speak, less retainer hours on reporting and, and time is money, right. And, and towards your retainer and, and more time on execution. Right. Yeah. You know, each organization may be different and each, you know, initiative. So, you know, like you said, you may report quarterly on social media, but you, it may be, you know, every two weeks on PR wins or, you know, whatever it may be. But I think also like what you were reporting is probably more important than how often you were reporting and even like the context of what you're reporting matters. So I think, you know, just even PR marketers, our industries kind of evolved a lot through the years in the way it tracks circulation rates or, you know, it used to be like unique viewers per month. And I, and I guess it is still with digital websites, but, you know, 
and you're right. Like, what are those key, what are those key things like unique visitors per month? And, and how are those gonna, you know, if you're in PR and, you know, what does that mean? And okay, great. So this reached, you know, a hundred thousand follower, uh, potential visitors to the site. And I agree with all that. And the context, like you said, Jennifer matters. Yeah. And I think, you know, just looking at not just this one single, you know, point in time of, oh, well, we got this one placement, but like looking right. at it in the context of, you know, how are we, how are we doing overall? Like, how are we progressing in our, you know, how are we comparing against like prior months and years mm -hmm. and previous releases or announcements? Just kind of putting some context around whatever metrics that you're tracking. Yeah. And I, I think the final thing that I think we really have to touch upon here is if there's any way you can retire reporting into well leads or or sales right that real life stuff right don't you the answer is no tom i know no. i know you know so on the pr side again i feel and you, that's tough to how do you how do you write that in a report you don't it's more saying hey marketing or sales staff are you talking to the customers or either potentials or actual customers in terms of Basically, how'd you hear about us? Did 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 you read about us in the news? Did you read that article? Did you hear about us somewhere else? Um, so I don't know. It's it's a tough question that we we often try and help with, but I don't think you really can tie it into, especially on the PR side of things, necessarily. Yeah, you know, obviously there's there's more ways, and you know, when you get into more sophisticated Salesforce, Pardot mm -hmm. software, where you're in the, in your marketing efforts, where you kind of know what campaigns you know, have, have driven this prospect further through the, the cycle. But in most cases, like, so, you know, we're in an industry where it's B2B healthcare IT, it's, it's a long game. Like the sales cycle, you know, it's, it's very different. So if you're talking about a hospital health system and where you're, you know, bringing patients in to, to schedule an appointment and, you know, it's, it's a, an easier click. So like it's, you know, right, you're not right. buying a hundred thousand dollar software and you've got to go through 10 decision makers and all the things. It's just this one person that came to your website because, you know, they, they need to have a colonoscopy and they call to, to schedule an appointment. But if the activity isn't happening online and then it, you know, it goes, leads to a phone call, it's tying those two together and knowing that, Hey, John Smith who called on the phone is the same John Smith that was just on the website because right, he right. saw our article in chiropractor times or, you know, like whatever it is, it's painting a big picture. But when you're looking at, okay, well, we had 20,000 hits to the website. What does that yeah. mean? So, mm -hmm. I mean, we can report all day, like metrics and some of them, I mean, it's like, yeah, they sound great, but like, what does that actually mean to the business? What does that mean to the bottom lines? And so it's kind of like yep. doing the analysis and tying those things together, you know, that, that really makes a difference and is what, you know, probably the CEOs and the, you know, organization leaders want to see. Yeah, no. And, and I'll say one, one thing too, and, and you're right. That's, that's some of the the ways, you know, we can tie things into even like some of the marketing tactics. And I, I'll say this about the one of the PR sides. I use the example of an article, maybe one article that appears in a publication, but I can tell you this, if you just launched a new virtual care prod, uh, platform technology that's geared towards, you know, pediatricians, and that story ran in a hundred publications, including a couple mainstream pubs and your sales kind of went up. Heck yeah, I'm going to tell you that it was the result of those, you know, those PR placements, those articles that are placed, or at least a good part of it. So I guess it all depends on the same thing, kind of like the context of how, how, where those new leads or those sales came in. Was it after a huge PR push that appeared in major publications, a uh, combination of that with some marketing stuff, website clicks, things like that. So, so yeah, I, I don't want to shortchange that because that's where instant gratification can happen, I think, from from PR. Yeah, and so like, but some of those, I mean, that's more qualitative reporting than quantitative because it's more you're, you know, you're looking at yeah. and like making the assumption that that was that played a, a significant role, but there's no one to one direct. Yes, this person said I read this article and they're coming from this, but a logical person would understand that, oh yeah, we had this huge spike. Definitely makes sense because we just had this big campaign, you know, but at the same time, you could have had, you know, that, that launch and all those publications, you could have had, 
you know, digital advertising out there. It could have been a combination of all of those things. But at the end of the day, you know, so you can't say like what actually, oh, this one ad did it or this one, you know, article, we should look for more articles than that. But you're looking at it from like this wide lens perspective and saying, hey, what we did worked. Like we, we got a, a ton of hits, like our sales went up. We should do that again. I am. I think we are all planning and <laughs> reporting, reporting. And yes, we are. Okay. Exhausted. Well, I think that's all the time we have. We've got to get back and um, make some reports. We do and, and plan. Yes. Right. Well, thanks to our listeners for joining us today. We are sponsored by Anderson Interactive and can be heard weekdays at 10 a.m., 6 p.m., and 2 a.m. Eastern on Healthcare Now Radio. And a reminder that we are always looking for brilliant health IT marketers or healthcare marketers at a corporation or agency that can join us on a future episode. We'd love to hear have you on so you can share your anecdotes of promotional campaigns that you think are working for your organization and talk about what marketing tactics you see as overrated and underused. You can reach us at hello at Anderson I, that's the letter I, dot com. Thanks for listening to the Overrated and Under You Show with your host, experienced marketers, Jen Jennings and Tom Testa and special guests, Adrian Stoner. Over-